night. Good evening. Don't leave, don't you? You aren't going to leave when I say good night. But it is so good to see all of you. God bless you. Let me pray with you, and we'll get started, okay? Let's pray. Father, we want you tonight to move. We desire for you to have your will. We desire for your way to be done in this service. And as we did this morning, it's going to take some time to pray with you, Lord. Thank you. God, thank you for letting us pray to you. Thank you for letting us open up to you. Dear sister here, just a little while ago, opened up her heart to you. Yes. Father, my heart just broke for her as she did that. I know it's hard to be going through so many different things. Satan is trying to destroy so many people's lives. And he wants to hurt this church. I think our people, Lord, I believe your people are going to be stunned at some of the things they hear tonight. Or at least pleasantly surprised. I know for me, I just look at it and I, I'm, I'm dumbfounded by what you did in 2020. I'm amazed by some of these facts, some of these things, these figures. I, I can't believe it. And I'm asking, Father, that you'll help us to gasp <laughs> in delight at who you are. Help us to get excited about what you're doing. And really let it get down inside of us. And, and Father, may it be that if we're 150 years old, we'll still glorify you with hands raised and praise you and get uh, to a point where we're just excited about how you're moving, God. Do it tonight in each of us, I pray. And give us wisdom as we march forward now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as you know, this is Vision Sunday. This is a fantastic crowd, considering that there are a couple families out with Pirate Club out here. They're doing, is that what this is called? What do they, what do they call that thing now, huh? Pastor Pirate. Pastor Pirate. Pastor Pirate. Pastor Pirate. Is it Pastor Pirate? You know, I think they're starting. What is that other thing they're doing? What's it called? Oh, Fishers of Kids. So pray about the Fishers of Kids group. Listen, uh, there is a very sweet, very well, very deep teacher that is among us. Very sweet teacher that is among us. And I'd like to see, start working with Sunday school. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to get to a point where our young Christians, our young Christians have a class, and then our new members have a class. Because what you've got is a bunch of new members coming in that know all the basics. They've gone through all that. I don't want them to get bored. I want them to get some good teaching and understand what the Word of God says, maybe from our Constitution, some of the things that we believe. And then on the other hand, having these new people come in. And so as the Sunday school ex expands, that gets me excited as well. We're, we're praying about that. But Vision Sunday today is such a good time. I started... The first day of work today with my kids and enjoyed that. It's been a blessing all day. I'm grateful for what God's done with our missionaries. I'm grateful for what he's doing in the church itself. I'm going to give you some things that I think will be very exciting for you tonight. And then we're going to get to hear Jesus speak tonight. Amen. And Travis tonight. Very nice. Tuesday. This Tuesday, 4 o'clock. We're going to have a great time of visitation. There's a massive group of people out on visitation on Saturday. Uh, if you can come on Tuesday, please come. If you can't come till Wednesday, Ms. Wendy, Joe, Dr. Bruce, Tim, you guys that are part of the college, you guys start out at 4 o'clock? 3.30. 3.30. Okay, 3.30 on Wednesday if you want to go on visitation. Thursday, 4 o'clock. You'll see there's new faces all over the auditorium. People that are on the Facebook, brand new people all the time, Daddy. I'm getting excited about Facebook, really, really neat. And uh, Brother Earl's getting all these checks in the mail, he keeps telling me. You know what that means? means people are getting invested. And I'm understanding also people are witnessing on Facebook. I'm telling you about that tonight. And also the ones that are out in their cars. Hey, don't discount the folks that are out there in the parking lot. They're not necessarily fearful. They're just being cautious. Some of them might even be sick. And some of them, with their cautions, 
have been wise because of their underlying conditions. But isn't it incredible that they've come out of the house and they've made the, the, the point of worshiping with us right here physically. So I get excited about that too. Okay, February 13th, bonfire February 13th. Don't forget the love banquet. It's free. It's free. Eddie, you coming? I thought you were. You coming? I thought you were. Hey, get these out to everybody all over the auditorium. Make sure they sign up. And friends, my dear friends, stand together with me if you'll sing with me. Grace greater than our sin tonight. Grace greater than our sin. Let's sing it out.
tonight, please, to help us. We're in need of you. There's nothing that can get through to you of our flesh. Your Holy Spirit ministers through our spirit. <laughs> and we thank you for that. Thank you, dear Lord God, that you can defeat this old flesh. One day it will be destroyed. In the meantime, we are grateful that you are able to defeat it. Even now, dear Lord God, we're asking that in our giving you'll defeat our flesh. That we'll give much more than we think we're capable of tonight. As the ushers are coming down the aisle, I ask you, Father God, to work in each of them. Work in the people they're ministering to. As we begin this part of our worship tonight. Use the ushers. Use the people. Use the individuals that are in these pews. Use even the music that is being played during the ushers and offering time. And Father, I pray for those that are in the parking area. That even now, as checks are being written, dollar bills are being pulled down. That you, God, would take every cent. And help people to know that if their heart is in the right place, you're interested in the pennies. You're interested in the pennies, just not the big dollar amounts, but the, the pennies, Lord. May we really give as that widow who gave her to Denarius tonight. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
you have a song sheet, if you don't, if you have a song book, it's 394. There was a misprint on the uh, on the on the register there. We're gonna look up on the screen. Greater is he that is in you. That is in me. <laughs> I need to learn how to read. <laughs> Greater is he that is in me. Amen. Oh, let's sing out on this. Greater is he that is in me. I mean, I've got eyes. I can see who's in the building and who's not. I realize that we had driving for 21 days during December. Amen. Pastor, for goodness sake, are you saying that was the best year ever? Absolutely, without a doubt. Amen. Now, let me tell you what. It was the hardest year ever to see actual progress. Okay? It was the hardest year to ever see actual progress. Progress. But there were three churches going on during 2020. Yeah. You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. You said, well, what are you talking about? Well, the guys and gals that you could see who were coming in the building were one of those churches. Yeah. The yeah. second of those churches was the drive-in church. And yeah. sometimes we all joined them. You remember that, right? Yeah. We were all out there. Yeah. And I pray that God would never have to do that again. But if we do... That's his business, and we will obey him. You understand that? We'll go ahead and do what he says. But number three, these physically, I don't know how to say it. People who had a hard time with their physiques, you understand what I'm saying? People who were either in the hospital or people who had underlying conditions. It was the what we call the Facebook church, all right? Now, I would never count all 300 of the people that once in a while are watching, or the all 150 of the ones, but I will tell you who they were. I can give you their names, okay? And you will recognize the names, all right? Largest summer services ever, sometimes uh, seemingly, because if we have to add them up from Facebook, Drive, and all that, were anywhere between 230 and 240 people. Now, how do we know that that's substantive? Well, it's because, my friends, uh, Earl, was it 120, 140,000 more dollars came in in 2020 than in 2019? Something like that, right? So it's amazing to us the increase in the amount of money. You say, now, Pastor, why does that matter? It's because people who are invested in a church are active in the church, and many of them are witnessing through Facebook through different means. I had a lady yesterday that I went down to Ocean City trying to witness, witness to part of my family. And sometimes that's happening when no one else knows about it. No one else sees it, whether that's electronically, over the phone, or whatever else. People are being touched by the Spirit of God, and they're actively moved in this church to do certain things. Now, God saved many souls. Many families came into the church. Let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. You saw many baptisms up until very recently. Some of those baptisms that I'd like to see happening, I'm still praying about. Some folks are a little bit nervous about the baptistry at this time. How many of you can understand that? Okay, very good. So you got the Winklers that have come in. Jeffrey and Lauren and their family that have come in in 2020. Jeff and Sue O'Day are attending and enjoying every so often here. James and Ronnie Downs. Tim Moody came in in 2020. Josh Artigas, Lynn Howell, Amanda Gill, Shirley and Marilyn. You know, Shirley and Marilyn have been coming the last couple of weeks. Elaine also. Jeremiah and Jermica, Earl Jones, Lou and Rochelle Everline, Ed Hall, Hale's family, Sam Adkins, Carson, Alexis family and her kids, Katrina Workman and family, uh, uh, the Bartons and Barb as well. And these new children that are coming, uh, what what the gentleman's name is, we start out with La Marquez. Now, I, is, it, this is brothers and sisters. Who all over here is rep represented tonight? 
Is this brothers and sisters of the Marquez? Yeah. And then uh, always new visitors coming in. And that's exciting. Gary Bart, uh, Gary, um, what's his name? Clark was here this morning. One that we know and grateful for that. You count that up and you're going to find that is a significant chunk of people that have come in 2020. Now, how many of you would raise your hand and say, Pastor, I wasn't included in that, but I came in 2020. Anybody else? Did I miss anybody? Okay, one, two, three, four. Five, six, okay, seven. So we're talking probably 40 people that have joined the church in 2020. Now, get amazed Amen. about that. Get amazed about that. Now, our home church considered shut-ins, all right, are Jeannie Allen, Barbara Jewell, Gail Robinson, Gary and Cindy Truitt, Sherry and Bill Shepperson, Conrad and Bonnie Bovier, Ruth Rice, Mildred and David West, Sue Winkler, of course, Terry Crowley, Jane Phillips, Ruth Ann and Ronnie Cook, Ginger and Jim Culper, Ricky Vickers, Carol Pragman, who actually is coming tonight. And Ricky, I don't know if he's here. Is Ricky here tonight? Ricky show up? Okay, sometimes they'll pop in and out. Alan Holly Majanis, Bill Dryley, and Kim and Tom Elmore. And that is a huge chunk of people. Now, I, did I not mention somebody that's a regular part of our group that is giving, that is really involved, because these people are that we would consider sort of shut into their home because of COVID. Earl, can you think of anybody else I'm missing? So what I'm trying to tell you is when you look around and see our 120, 130 people come, don't shut out those who are in the parking lot, those who are at home. This church has thunderously grown in 2020. Amen. And when this thing is over, and I believe it will be, I believe, a lot of people say, oh, it's never going to go away. I'm, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. It's got to go. I believe it will go, just like the Spanish flu went after a few years. I do believe it's going to happen. I think it's going to go. And I think we're going to get back to some normalcy. And when it does, there ain't going to be enough seats in this auditorium for the people that will show up. Yeah. It is amazing how God has worked in 2020. So a lot of people, oh, it was a rough year. It wasn't a rough year in this church, I'll tell you that. God is blessed in some tremendous way. And another evidence of that, Earl was saying when we were in there with the men tonight, he said, I'm telling you, I believe, he said it in prayer. He's talking to the Lord. He said, I'm telling you, Lord, I believe that this year we're going to see a much bigger group of financial supporters than we've seen in any previous year. Why would he say that? Earl, do you mind if I share what's going on this month? Okay. Up to this point, you know, this is a five-week month for us. This is our fourth Sunday. As of this morning, $32,500 are coming to this church in the month of January. And that's why Earl is saying, I think 2021 is going to blow 2020 out of the water. I believe he's right. You know what we gave last month, last January? I think it was $17,000. Oh, pardon me. What was it? Yeah, okay. Set, I said between seventeen and eighteen thousand dollars, I believe it was last year. So think about the difference. Is that mind blowing to you? I mean, I think of how God is moving, and I'm overwhelmed, overwhelmed. So you're looking when you add all of this up, and, and I have, you know me, <laughs> I have. You're looking at a congregation of some two hundred and thirty to two hundred and fifty people. Amen. All right. So God has done some things that I think we don't get. We don't understand it. You say, now, Pastor, those people at home, are they really dedicated? You go and ask Conrad and Bonnie if they're dedicated. Yeah. yeah. You go ask Barb Jewel. She doesn't love Jesus to the hilt. Yeah. It's just she's had cancer. She's concerned she's going to die if she gets this thing. Ruth Rice, same way. You ever see a Sunday Ruth went back there with you guys? Man, she was back there all the time. Janice LaProd. I forgot to mention Janice. Janice. She's one of those that has had to stay home. Tom had to feel staying home all the time. You don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. It's difficult. But my friends, what I want to do tonight is encourage you in Jesus Christ that God is alive and well at First Baptist Church. And he continues to move in ways that we don't understand. Now this group of missionaries, I think there were 17 when I came. Am I wrong about that? 
Okay, so if you go through the list, you'll see, because he's been so wise to put the year that the missionaries came in. And um, the amount of missionaries, let me just make sure here. The amount of missionaries that we started with, you can start, okay, it was 21. 20, 20 missionaries. So 2021, we took on our first, the Reeds, all right? And uh, so there have been 17 missionaries added. That's where I got to say 17 missionaries added in the last three years. That is phenomenal. $4,525 going out to missionaries every single month. You're giving anywhere between five and six. Sometimes, is, is it ever gotten close to 7000 in a month? Or? A couple of times. A couple of times. Okay, so praise the Lord. You guys are doing a tremendous job with the missions. I just praise God for that. The second sheet I want to show you is this. There's four pages. You see these little tiny words? Little tiny words. Four of those pages. That con Look at that. That constitutes the customer contact list. <laughs> These are the ones that are giving, have given, are a part, that are active in the church. And Earl is so wise to have put this together. He's got addresses and phone numbers and things like that. Man, that's why I get to bug you so much. I just love it. Don't you love getting those texts? <laughs> you know I care about you. I want you to know what's going on. And certainly I want you here. And then finally and last, I'm going to have Brother Earl come up if you will. And we'll just go ahead and do this before, because the last thing I want you to think of when you're headed to your car is not the finances, not what's going on necessarily, not the hundreds of people that have come through in the year 2020. I want you to leave here, not just the souls, not the salvations, not the discipleship. I want you to leave here thinking of the word of God. Is that okay to do? David? I want people to think of the Word of God. Do you want to think of the Word of God? Do you want to think of the Word of God? Who says, I want to think of the Word of God when I leave here? Well, that's what we want to do. Is Jesus, Travis, we want you guys to be the end. We want our invitation to be at the end. And so right now, we're going to go ahead and finish up with Vision Sunday. Now, let me give you understanding why Brother Earl is getting things together while he's getting things together. I just want you to know that for 2021, there are several goals that we've set. One of those goals is that I'd like to get closer in our regular attendance to 300 people. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to get, that would be one of my goals, to get closer to 300 people. I'd also like to see us get close to $300,000 in the offering. You say, Pastor, that's crazy. Well, this last year was 269000 You understand that? So what we want to do is get to $300,000. That would be a great goal, would it not? How many of you would like to see 50 people get saved in the year 2020? I'd love to see that. Wouldn't you love to see that? I think we're close to that in 2020. But I think 2021, we could see 50 people, maybe more than that. Maybe that's a small number. Maybe we ought to say 100. <laughs> Let's just say between 50 and 100 people that would come to Christ. And then now listen to this. If we had, and I believe we did, about 40 people, wouldn't you agree with me? About 40 people joined us in 2020 in regular attendance. Wouldn't it be neat if we saw 60 people come in 2021 in regular attendance? Man, that would put us at about 310, 320 people in regular attendance. Now, let me ask you, my friends, if you believe God can do it, give the most thunderous applause you possibly can. You believe you can? so funny. Larry Youngblood got to me. I'll tell you, he really got to me this week. He said, for all of those out there that are quiet and like the quiet, they're going to hate heaven. <laughs> they're going to hate heaven. Lord, there's going to be such thunderous applauses, such thunderous music, such thunderous tones, such great amen, such hallelujah choruses, such holy, holy, holies all over heaven. And we're just so excited about that glorious day when we'll celebrate over and over again your great wisdom and grace. Tonight, Father, come. Get inside our minds. Touch us, dear Lord God, with your wisdom and knowledge. And we'll thank you, dear Lord God, as you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's do this last song before Brother Earl comes. I still don't see him in here. We'll just stand together and we'll sing Blessed Be the Name. And then Earl will come and give us the financial report. And we'll get right into the preaching tonight.
Patrick and Michelle Reed came from Perloff. So they got included in some of the gifts, and we had video speakers too. Uh, Marvelous Grace, the McKinney's, the Masons, and the yeah. Marcus. So anyhow, the total we spent for that was seven thousand eight hundred thirty-four dollars yeah. and seventy cents. Yeah. Uh, the next list are love offerings and gifts that were given through missions uh, during the year uh, to the different missionaries. Now, if you look at Atlantic Coast Baptist College, it says forty-one hundred, and it says ninety-five percent designated. I just wanted you to know that's not money the church pays to the college. That's money that comes in from you all. It's designated yes. for the yes. college. Yes, praise the Lord. Money that's pledged during the year for, for the Bible conference and the dinner and all that. Praise God. So that came to $8,968.08. So the subtotal for the missions and faith promise was $63,838. Hey, man! Then you have the pastor salary, pastor Barry salary, and Brother Tom salary, which is $92,296. Uh, Reformic Unanimous, which is self supporting, uh, $940.35. <coughs> Excuse me. When we first took them on, we paid, we paid for the books and supplies and everything, but since that, they've been self supported. Yeah, yeah. Each month for the books and all of The Netherlands Fund Food Pantry. Uh, $2,649.10 and we helped about 13 individual families this year plus a lot more through the food pantry hey, and I have a list of those if anyone would, if anyone would like to see it because we don't print it for obvious reasons because we help a lot of families at our church uh, the teen group had spent $1,866.13 and they're also really self-supported they raised all their money through their fundraising activities hey, and then you have a list of operations and supplies, so uh, electric and Comcast. And you can read down through those. If you have any questions, just please see me. Uh, on the top of page seven, church mutual insurance. That's who we had for the first six months of the year. And then we changed to Goodwill Mutual. Uh, because we didn't really, really have a representative from church mutual, we felt that uh, if we had to contact somebody, we had to call and wait two or three days from the call back and out in Wisconsin. So we found this company with a local rep, uh, Randy Brown, who lives in Millsboro, and he works for Avery Hall Insurance. And we got better insurance, it's $500 a month cheaper, so hey. we have somebody we can just pick up the phone and call. Good. And the other thing down through there, you can read uh, cleaning. We have two people that clean, uh, Kevin Brown and Sarah Seacrest. And Sarah just started cleaning the, really the first of last year. It's about $400 a month we pay out for cleaning. And the rest on down the page are just from people we buy from for monthly supplies. It's quite a list, but we try to buy things where we get the best price. Page eight, uh, repairs and improvements. Uh, some of these can fall into the next group, which, uh, or the previous group. They can be missed in either group, but these are things we had to fix for the year. Um, I should read down through them. I said we read through them all. But we made a lot of improvements during the year. We put LED lights in the parking lot. Uh, we had the water tank inspected, which we had to do, which cost uh, having, it, having the tank inspected inside. And, uh, we fixed the things that they had on there that were critical. We had to spend $4,184. I think they had about 15000 they wanted to fix, but we just fixed the critical things. And we spent a lot of money, uh, or spent money out in the vestibule, making that look uh, more friendly. Yes. And, hey. uh, we bought displays and chairs and banners, and we, we see the things listed there. Yes. And we bought two TVs, which I hope the TV you get put up either this week or next week. Yes. And hey. uh, we'll have them. And we bought a shed, or really a garage, which will be here in two weeks. It'll be here February 10th. And we we'll pay, we'll pay half down on that. It's 7200 But it's uh, a, a garage, actually, with a garage door you can put up and down. And then we have VPS supplies, <coughs> Sunday school uh, donations, advertising, taxes and licenses. Uh, we do pay one, a couple of taxes, a ditch tax, which is on the farm, $10.21. And uh, that went to the old church and to the school, and they didn't know, they didn't know what, what it was. <laughs> Mr. Porter kept telling them, we're in town, we don't have a ditch. So, but anyhow, they said they got sent to the wrong address and they were ready to put a lien on the property for $10.21. That's how they got that paid and got the address. And also the same thing with Delaware State 
franchise tax, that's a tax we pay every year. It's supposed to be $25, but this is totally my fault because we didn't get the bill and I didn't think about it. We got charged a $235 penalty. Don't worry about it. <coughs> that won't happen next year. It's on my calendar, or this year. It's on my calendar. I'll have to do it. But uh, it's strictly proper to mail. You all know how much of a problem our address is in the post office box. It's really been a pain. Uh, gasoline for myself, uh, I, don't, I don't take a salary for being treasurer, but I do get to fill my car a couple times a month. That's good. And uh, I'm here four or five times a day, yes. usually 40 to 50 times a month. Yes. So thank God I only live a mile, 1.2 miles away. It's probably going to be a lot more next year. Our site and sale trip, we refunded that because we decided, most people decided they didn't want to go, so we gave everybody refunds on that. Postage and printing, that's for bulletins, envelopes, tracts, all of that. So the total expenses for the year is $248,260.36. Down in summary, if you look at the balance for 2019, it was 100,000, 123.4. You add that to this year's income, 290,000, 43.4. That gave us an income of $390,526.64. And if you subtract the expenses, 248,000, 236. Gives you a balance of 142, 266.28. Subtract that with the balance from 2019 from that. You'll see we saved forty-two thousand one hundred forty-two dollars and eighty-eight cents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And I think the way January started off, I think we were going to double or triple that this yeah, year. Yeah, okay. yeah. Another word of blessing. So everybody receives a year end statement, or either by hand or in the mail. And if you have any mistakes, please let me know. Or if you didn't get one, please let me know. And there's a new missionary list in the back. Uh, we've added our thirty-seventh missionary. Uh, David Seacrest, <laughs> intern, so he's the first missionary of 2021, so 37 missionaries. If I have any questions, I know I went over that really fast. Yes? It's a motion in order? Yes. I move that the treasurer's report be accepted as presented. Okay. I you second. Know, you second. Any discussion? Well, i tell you what, Brother Earl, can I tell you something? I think we can forgive the two hundred sixty dollars since you did about forty thousand dollars worth of work. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what God did? Tell me if that's not incredible. Two thirty-five. He says you knew exactly what I was doing wrong. Hey, come on up here, Jesus, won't you, man? All right, is everybody in agreement? Let's vote real quick on accepting the treasury report. Put your hand up real quick. Let's see one, two. Guys, look for the record. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four, fifty-six, seventy-eight, 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 nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty-four, fifty-six
I couldn't help but throw myself on the altar and just get with you and start examining and asking for self-introspection. Lord, I know many of our church did that. It is hard to find chinks in the armor of this church, but I know Satan's doing it. He's trying. I'd ask you, oh, Father God, please, in Jesus' name, to protect this flock. We're sinners. We're poor. We're needy. We're broken. And as much good as there is going on here, as much Satan wants to see this church fall all apart in 2021. Lord, we know that he is waiting to sift First Baptist Church as wheat. He's wanting to destroy Travis. He's wanting to destroy Jesus. He's wanting to do in their lives things that would destroy many others who have been disciples of theirs. We thank their Lord God of many people who are needing just like these two men. All of us. Amen. To be yielded completely to you. So right now, Father, I'm asking that these two boys would examine themselves right now. And that you, Father, would disband sin from their lives. That they actively would not just talk about forgiveness, but that they repent of it. That they get rid of it out of their life. That they would make new habits. If it be that there's anything in them that should not be there. So that when they preach tonight... It's pure you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, who's going to start? Are you going to start? Okay, go for it, bud. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, if we want to grow closer to God, if we want to mature, if we want to be a, a man of God, not a child of God, uh, we're going to have to get in the Word. We're going to have to work, right? Uh, and, you know, God just really showed me that, uh, you know, that's one thing that's really keeping us uh, from having revival is uh, that, uh, you know, we, we keep on praying, we keep on asking, you know, uh, the Lord to do this and that, you know, but God wants us to do the possible and uh, yes. do the impossible. Hey. And so I just, I just praise God for, you know, that, uh, first of all, let's, let's, uh, let's see what, not, what is knowledge, right? Let's, let's ask that question. Uh, what's knowledge? Uh, well, that's his word. That's God's word. Amen. Knowledge is God's word. And uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 says, uh, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise the throne. And uh, let me explain something, y'all. Uh, sin is sin. Yes, it is. No matter how small, no matter how big it looks, uh, no matter how common we have it goes throughout our, our lives, uh, sin is sin. And uh, sin separates us from God. Right. Yes. right. Yes. Um, there's there are a lot of sins that in our lives today that uh, you know we don't think they're sins, you know, or, or, or we kind of like put it put it off to the side that uh, you know those are just small sins, you know, white lies, stuff like that, you know. Um, and, and God's not happy with that. No, no. Uh, Amen. You know, like I said, sin is sin. It says here that uh, in James chapter 4, verse 17, it says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and, do and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Right, right, right. Uh, and that's not, that's not all. I mean, there's, like, there's a bunch of commandments in the Word of God. Um, and, and look, uh, my pastor once, once told me that if there was only one commandment in the Word of God, we would all break it. <laughs> and we saw that in the Garden of Eden. That's right. I saw that in the Garden of Eden. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, it seems hard, right? You know, like when I think when I first got here, uh, you know, and started living, trying to live uh, a godly life, uh, I tried to do it my, on my own, and it just didn't work out. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I kept stumbling. I kept uh, falling. You know. Yeah. Uh, because because I like you know, well, my flesh likes uh, you know to do to run. Uh, it likes it, my flesh. Our flesh. Uh, its nature is the opposite of God's nature. Right, right. Uh, God is good. God is holy. Um, anything, yeah. any goodness you see in me, uh, it's all from God. You know, it's not me. That's <laughs> right. My nature is bad. Yeah. But, uh, but because God saved us and made us a new creature, uh, we now have a, a we're, we're new people. You know, we we're, are. We're, we're God's children. Uh, and God, Jesus Christ, <laughs> he came to the cross to die for sinners. You know, Amen. Uh, we're, we're to go out and preach the gospel. That's, that's what he told us. Hey, that's what he to do. Uh, you know, it might not feel comfortable, you know. I, I know I don't feel comfortable, to, you know, preaching the Word of God. Um, but, uh, but but God, His Word says that in, in my weakness, He is strong. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're not alone in this. Uh, that's why Jesus died and He left. Uh, when we got saved, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of us. Yeah. Hey. And, you know, you're not alone. It, it seems like, you know, it, it seems like, sometimes it seems like you're alone, you know, but... Uh, but if you want, if you want power, if you want knowledge, if you want wisdom, you're gonna have to search for it. You're gonna have to get in here. Amen. Yes. This is where all the answers to all their problems are. This is where all the answers Good. to all your questions are. Yes. They're in here in the Word of God. Amen. And uh, Amen. don't take me for you know, don't trust me. Uh, trust God. You know, this is God's word. He He never lied to me, and He never will. Uh, you know, I put God to the test a lot of times. Uh, I remember when I first started uh, searching for God. I, I really didn't. I really didn't think that he was. Uh, you know, he was real. You know, I, I didn't think he was a. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't know if there was any God actually. And but but, I tried it. You know, I tried to. I spent time with God in His Word, and uh, and you know, I just I was I was searching for Him. Started going to a Pentecostal church, and uh, I was just really confused. You know, but, uh, but but the Lord said, you know, I I cried out unto the Lord, and uh, He answered me. Yeah. Know? Uh, Amen. And it's just it's just a blessing. Amen. Blessing. And uh, what what is revival to you? everybody here? Uh, let me get some hands too. What's revival? Someone, let me see. Somebody, anybody? Revival. What's revival? Amen. There we go. So, um, going from a sinful state to what we know God's word says that we ought to do. Amen. 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 That's good. Good. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And. and uh, there's another verse in the Bible that says, uh, "Show to yourselves in righteousness, break up your uh, show yourselves in righteousness, weep in mercy, break up your foul ground, for it is time to yes, for us. Yes. Amen. So come and break righteousness. That's good. That's good. Uh, the foul ground. Nobody wants to go there because that's where all the work is. 
That's where all the work is. Right. And, um, well, in order to plant anything, you know, first you gotta you gotta till up the ground, right? First, you, know, you, you want to have good ground. You want to have good uh, crops. You gotta have the ground. You know? Right. And the only way to have the ground is uh, to break up that fallow ground. You know, get get rid of that sin. You know that uh, that God's been talking to you about. That that uh, that stuff that He's been telling you not to listen to. Uh, that stuff that He's been telling you not to watch anymore. That stuff that He's been telling you to do. Uh, you gotta do it if you want to grow. If you want to. Uh, be a man of God you know, or a woman of God. If you want to mature, if you want to stop eating the, start drinking milk, start eating steak, you know, start eating food. You know, if uh, if you want revival, uh, you're gonna have to do your part. Right. Uh, you're gonna have to do the possible, and God's gonna do the impossible. He's he just will. waiting on you. He will. And uh, and I just pray to God for for His mercy, uh, because God God uh, gives us blesses us when we don't deserve it mm -hmm. a lot of times. But I just praise God for that, and uh, that's just my little message. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Travis, come on up here, if you will. Hey, you know, I like a guy that gets up, puts up, and shuts up. Don't you? That was all right. I wish Pastor Barry would do that more. Okay. Come on. Sarah Black. Sarah Black. No. Yeah, I heard my dad do it too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> is it on, Travis? Oh, no, it's on. Turn it off. Did you? Did you alcohol us? Oh, no. You did? Oh, Dr. Bruce, where is that? Just to be sure. Did you hear that? Check, check. He's one to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, snap. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, the labor is worthy of the hire. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Deep breath, brother. Deep breath. I'm going to say it was on Ooh, that's getting close. Uh, my title uh, of my sermon is called uh, Regeneration to Revival. Hey, man, yes. Okay. You first have to have regeneration before we can get to revival. That's true. Yes. And, yes. Yes. and this is for, for those who have accepted Christ into their yes. lives. Yes, correct. For those who haven't made him their Lord and Savior over their lives, um, you have to be born again. Right. Amen. Amen. Regeneration is born again through the Spirit, not water, not water. Uh, physical, but of the spirit. Right. Um, so, let's, let's, go, let's get into this. Uh, what is revival? I know we just asked that question. We got, we got a good answer uh, from Mike West over here. And, um, I was looking this word up. We was asked this word plenty of times throughout this month. Uh, what is revival? And I believe what I found is, is the most true to me is a Hebraic word named called chaya, meaning to bring back to life yes. or to restore, to yes. constitute. In That's other it. words, restoration, rejuvenation, or renewal of interest after spiritual That's right. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, what is spiritual neglect? I'm pretty sure that would look different to uh, a lot of different people, but. Uh, I got, a, I got a, um, a short story. When I was, uh, I know I am young, but when I was younger, <laughs> I um, had took an oath to be a disciple of God. And this oath was simply agreeing to live my life by a passage, a certain passage in the Bible. I'm not going to get into that passage yet, but my discipler um, said to me once upon a time that we wake up in the morning with three things against us. Um, and that is your own heart, your own flesh, right. number one. Number two, the world. That's yes. right. Yeah. All around us, uh, which we really can't escape from sometimes. Um, and Satan. Yes, that's um, right. If you would turn to Jeremiah 17, 9, um, it says there, the heart is deceitful above all things. That's and right. And desperately wicked. Yes. That's yeah. a very strong word, first and foremost. Desperately, right. who can know it? Um, 
First John, second, or yeah, first John chapter 2, 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things in the world. That's right. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. John 10, 10 um, refers to Satan as a thief. Yeah. And it says, the thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Yeah, that's right. But I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Um, the, 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 one of the biggest adversaries of these three, I would have to say, is Satan. Um, I know some would say it would be our flesh because that's inside of us. But I'd like to believe that for the most part, Satan does not want us and will stop us by any means from sharing our passion for Christ. Yeah. And will do anything it takes to try to prevent us from lifting up the name of Jesus That's Christ right, to non-believers. What does God say about uh, spiritual neglect? If you will turn to Revelations 15, or Revelations 3, verses 15 and 16. And this is what happens when we face first things like we start to become uh, warm. And I, God doesn't like that as it says here. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Mm -hmm. I would thou wert cold or hot. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Wow. 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 Right. So uh, we see that God. Uh, uh, has different ways of, of receiving us or accepting us. Some would say in our arm or in his arm, some would say in his chest or his bosom. Uh, but this right here clearly speaks that, that he also accepts us into his mouth. And, <laughs> yes, um, he does. Good. <clears throat> before I go on, I'd like to uh, give you a few uh, definitions. I had to look some of these words up to get a clearer understanding. I thought I knew what it meant. I believe I knew what it meant, but uh, uh, here they are. One is iniquity, which means immoral or grossly unfair behavior. Uh -huh. yes. The other word is contrite, uh -huh. meaning feeling or expressing remorse. A synonym for the word contrite is repentance. That's right. I had to look up uh, covet, which I just uh, understood not too too long ago in the beginning of last year what, what covet actually meant. That's actually a man. Thou shalt not covet. Amen. And covet means to yearn, to possess, or have. A synonym of covet would be to desire. Yes. Good. And I also had to look up froward, which means difficult to deal with or contrary. I know some of us know somebody that's froward, someone that just won't listen, that won't accept anything you're saying, that just, nah, I'm so, no, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. You know, somebody knows somebody like that. Um, so, we got these understandings, and let's get back to the actual message. Isaiah 15, Isaiah 57, 17 is what God is where God is when we happen to have spiritual neglect in our lives. And it says, For the iniquity of his covetousness was I walk and smoke him. I hid me. And was wrong. And he went fro and he went on frowardly in the way of his heart. And yep. there we see God actually hides himself uh, when we start to uh, neglect him. He does hide himself. That's it's, true. It's, it's almost a mirror. Right. He hides his face. When we don't see him, we don't look for him, he, good. Good. he kind of moves out of our way. And he's such a gentleman about it, too. Um, but he doesn't want that at all. He doesn't want to hide himself. He actually wants to rejoice with us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, when do we need revival on a personal level? I think we, uh, I think we would really need revival if we feel that TV 
Who looking at the TV is more important than you're being in the Bible and the mind of God. Right. Wow. And you start to right. be more concerned with, right. with, with what's on and who's doing this on this 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 show or or even sports. When we start to be more concerned with sports on, on TV, anything that we're giving more attention to than yeah. God, uh, when we start to see ourselves doing that, then, then that's when we, we see a sign that we need to follow. When we have little or no desire to pray at all. That's right. Yeah. That's when we need revival. Yes, sir. When we feel that there are uh, there are sins that we can tolerate. Mm. That's good. That's Come good. On. Really? good Amen. Uh, and I found myself guilty of doing this too, you know. Um, mm. So, so, this is what I mean. When we start to have such a critical spirit yeah, come on. Yeah. and no love around <coughs> it, that's when we need the Bible. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. That's right. yeah. When we start to say prayers that are empty words designed to impress others, that's right. 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 that's when we need the Bible. That's right. Amen. Amen. Um, I want you to go to Proverbs 16.6. Six. I want you to go to Proverbs 16.6. Six. I got to go down my text. Actually, I'm not even lying. Oh, it's there, right there. Uh, it says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Remember what iniquity is, right? Immor immorality, being more. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Um, do you fear the Lord? It's not me to. We need to fear yes, the Lord. We do, right. brother. <laughs> if we could go to the home, <coughs> Proverbs nineteen twenty three. I'm going to read that off the screen here. In the next few, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. That's good. Now, now you say, I fear the Lord, I fear the Lord, I fear the Lord. Are you still visited with evil? <coughs> Do you really fear the Lord? Amen. Proverbs 22, 4, please. And it says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. <coughs> I notice here that we need to have humility first before we can fear the Lord. Because sometimes we may be prideful and stubborn in our own ways. We want to look at the fear of the Lord. Why? We think we got it all together. And, uh, it's sad to say, if you don't fear the Lord, you don't. Um, not just that, that it, fearing the Lord promises, uh, as we've seen in, in the previous verse, life satisfied, but also riches. And honor. Yeah. Amen. Good. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I've got a couple more, and, and, and I'll, be, I'll be back. Second Corinthians 7, 9, and 10. Now I rejoice, not that you are made sorry, and by the way, I do want you to be sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance, yes, that's right. for ye were made sorry after a godly Amen. Amen. that ye might receive damage not us in, by us, not in, by us in nothing, sorry. So we need to repent. And this repent isn't just a, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, forgive me. That, that, that's worldly sorrow. Um, we need to have a true, deep God, sorrow. God, hey, Godly yes. God <coughs> sorrow. Are you sorry? First of all, if you fear the Lord, and you don't fear the Lord, are you sorry that you don't fear the Lord? 
I got this last one. And this ties along with repentance, which is a key, a key factor yes, sir. in both regeneration and revival. That's right. You cannot have neither or without repentance. That's, That's right. right. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen. And to repent, you truly have to separate yourself. Uh -huh. Are you separated? Does your heart sway back and forth? We've seen, we seen an example Gary, Gary uh, gave us this morning, and, and that was a really uh, great example of walking on that line of an electrical fence. Uh -huh. You can't be over here, you can't be over there. Because you cannot serve two masters. You right. love one and despise the other. Or, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, You're fine. You're doing job. good, Travis. Come on, man. But either way, thank you, Pastor, for this. <laughs> we have to worship God with all of our hearts, souls, and minds. That's right. Amen. This is the first and greatest commandment Jesus Christ gave us. That's right. And the second is like, love thy brother as I love thyself. That's right. All of the laws of the prophets of the commandments good. land on these things. First and foremost, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Are you truly doing that? If not, then you need to. You don't understand how great He can make your life. You don't understand what He can do, how He can transform. The situations of your life, if you just give it to him. Right, so man. Let, let go and let God. Amen. That's right. Amen. <laughs> I'm done, but I do want to give a short prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for bringing me here, bring, bringing me to this church. I thank you for all the all the people that are sitting in the congregation, all the people that's watching, all the people that's listening to it. I pray that you touch them, touch their hearts. Bring revival to them on a personal level, that we may have a revival on a church level, then on a city level, then on a national level. <coughs> ah, I pray that you move. I pray that you work. I pray that you convict hearts that we do what you need us to do. In Jesus' name. Find I surrender all, Richard, won't you? Will you stand?
preaching. We've heard a lot of different kinds of preaching throughout the month. And I've watched many of you come and get down on your knees. I've watched you get down on your knees in your pews. I've seen you sit down. I've seen you contemplate things. And I got to tell you, I'm having a hard time. It's like I said earlier, finding ways to criticize your beautiful faithfulness. This church is, I'm telling you, when David said that on Wednesday, he was right. Man, I got to tell you, I come here and I don't want to, I don't want to go anywhere on this day. Anybody with me on that? Hey. I just love being here. Man. I think the reason is because of this. You surrender all. Amen. You're surrendering. All. So what is else, what else is there to surrender once it's all surrendered? Amen. Are you really surrendered all? Not at me. You say I am, Pastor. <laughs> I love seeing that. Man, you can feel the wind. <laughs> That's awesome. Praise the Lord. And I believe it. And I thank God for it. I don't need to go on and on. Tonight, Barb came to be a member of our church. Praise Amen. the Lord. I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for what he's doing. I don't want to give you the impression that I know a lot about the facts and figures of the church. I just look at all the names and I count them all up. Okay? And so when I give you figures, don't trust in the figures, just trust in the names, okay? Because you can't lie with names. So you go through and look at that, add them up, see how the Lord is blessed. And if you're confused, I don't see how we could have 250. Man, you, you come and look at the list with me, and we'll look through it together. I want you to see it. And you saw the finances, man. You saw it was, what, 17, five, or 18, 500, I think, for that last year. And this year, man, God's blessing. If you're wondering if it's a good idea to support Atlantic Coast Baptist College, I think we realize now 
they are well worth your support. Don't you think? I believe that. All right, First Baptist Church, there's a visitor or two here. And I'd like for those that are involved in that ministry, JR, if you will, just to go around and make sure that every visitor fills out a visitor's card. Can you do that, JR? Make sure before they leave that they get it. I want to just read something to you, Dad, if you'd be so kind as to uh, uh, just give us a second here. I want to read something to you before I leave you. All right? I told you 725. It's only 721. Let me give you this. I know you know this. I wrote this to a friend today. I know you know this, but I believe it must be said just because my heart trembles. People are giving, say, winning souls, going out and giving time, being discipled, working in the church, staying for hours on end in the service, whatever it be. People are giving because God is God and Christ is King. I confess before this congregation right now, openly, to you with trembling. It is a very strange, odd, and reverent thing God is doing at First Baptist Church. Amen. And all of the honor and the glory yes. belongs to our King. Amen. And I am stunned. I have no answers for why these things are happening except to raise my hands in trembling fear, sincerely with a heart of fear, and say, all glory be to our living God. Amen. Amen. Have a good night, everybody. We love you.